Rob Long, Ravens expert from our sister station, The Fan in Baltimore. The Ravens earlier this year broke a Steelers rushing record of hundred of consecutive games with 100 yards by not taking a knee at the end of the game. So, Rob, what do you think about T.J. Watt? We know Villanueva can't block him. They're going to put three guys on him to make sure this doesn't happen? I thought you two were going to keep going and slap boxing while I was sitting here on hold. You eating French you know, fries so, again, Rob? I mean, I thought you got – well, I mean, you, got, you just tell me – somebody somebody put a, a yard stick and see who's bigger because it sinks. Um, I thought it was a – I love the way you say Tom Petty because it's funny to me. Listen, I'm a Ravens fan. Oh, yeah. But I'm a realist. I'm a realist. And a lot of people in Baltimore get upset with me for that. I remember the Ravens, the physical coordinator, Wick Martindale, who I love, was upset with the Cincinnati Bengals because they called timeout to kick a field goal so they wouldn't get shut out. He thought that was the worst thing ever mm-hmm. outside of the rules. Why does he call timeout to kick a field goal to preserve the shutout? You lost. This is late in the game. Well, why do you call a timeout and call a play for Lamar Jackson to run just to break a record? That's to me – that's akin to that. So I was not a fan of that play at all. Um, it didn't happen, in my opinion, in the in the rhythm of the game. Yep. Uh, there's certain things you do that somebody could have someone could have gotten hurt. Yeah. I mean, just, so you think Harbaugh's going to say, "Not in our house. We're not letting this guy come in here and break this record, no matter what." Well, see, that's different. That's different. If if <laughs> if within the confines of the rule, I keep T.J. White from breaking a record. Then that's all good. I mean, the Brett Favre play was BS. <laughs> that's so crappy. That should be an asterisk on it. Yeah, um, yes, yes, absolutely. See, those those are going outside of playing football to get a record. If you stop T.J. Watt within the confines of the rule because you double team him, you go back to protect. Then that's football. That's football. I mean, you could easily say not only are you stopping him for get, breaking that record, but if he gets if he goes all willy-nilly on your quarterback, you won't win the game. Mm. Rob, uh, are Ravens fans, because they have an even slimmer chance mathematically, they have to have a lot of stuff happen to get to the playoffs. Are they even treating this like a, hey, we got to win and then hope, or are Baltimore fans pretty much checked out in that particular regard? I mean, you must have been listening to Baltimore Sports Talk Radio. We got a lot of phone calls, but that level was like, you know what I mean? It was just us, you know, generating general conversations. <laughs> But it wasn't a lot of Steelers fire. Mm-hmm. I hate Ben fire. Try to go to the playoff fire. We didn't get a lot of that stuff, man. I mean, uh, you know, I, I even tried to tell my true feelings about Ben Roethlisberger and hope that I ruffle some feathers and, and then ruffle too many feathers. So, what do you mean? You got a respect for him, Rob? Is that what's controversial? You kind of like the guy down there in Baltimore? Time out. Do I like him? Ben Roethlisberger is my favorite Steeler of all time. Let's go. Oh. Let's He's go. my favorite stealer of all time. And listen, of the, of the last five years, twenty I mean, the last 20 years, he stopped five quarterback of the last 20 years. They five better. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the guy, to me, I was on the sideline looking for Westwood One Radio. Oh, congratulations when, on all your success. When, <laughs> no, this was years ago. Oh, okay. When Haloni Dada, when Haloni Dada pushed his nose to his cheek. Yep. I saw Ben come back in the game with blood dripping, playing football to beat the team that I'm cheering for. But, you know, so I, 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 I can hate. I don't hate Andy Dalton. Why? I don't hate him. I don't hate Baker Mayfield. Why? Because either one of those jokers are good. Mm. I hated Ben Roethlisberger because he was a Hall of Famer. And while I'm hating him, I, I, I had a great deal of admiration for him. I, I want him to lose every game, but I love the guy. It's just, it's just how it is. I hated the San Francisco 49ers, but Joe Montana is my favorite quarterback of all time. It's just it's how it goes because, you know, you, you just learn to respect people when you see them so much. And I saw Ben so much, and I watched this guy become who he is, that, you know, when it's all said and done, I'm going to stand and applaud him because he's my favorite player that ever wore that uniform. Rob, uh, you know, for the past six years, maybe even longer, Pittsburgh fans want Mike Tomlin on the hot seat. They want him to feel some type of t- some type of heat year in and year out, you know, not making the playoffs, this, this, and that. Should John Harbaugh be on the hot seat in Ravens fans' minds? Hey, yes, he, he is actually on Ravens fans' minds. Let's, let's go back to the beginning of Lamar Jackson in 2018. Okay. John Harbaugh was on the hot seat at 4-5. and five. And oh, yeah. Insert this young man from Louisville wearing number eight 
who were many people believe he saved his job. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But there were lots of talk about Harbaugh being on the hot seat. But Mark Jackson ended all of that talk. Um, you could, uh, some could say, well, has Ben Roethlisberger kept Mike Tomlin off the hot seat his entire career? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think Tomlin is a heck of a coach. And some people are going to say, why fire Mike Tomlin? If you fired him, he get a job before he left the building. Who else are you going to get? Well, you probably thought who was Mike Tomlin when you hired him. And you're right, though. He will get a job as soon as he leaves. But I just think there's an expiration date on every NFL coach. And you're looking at two coaches on Sunday in Baltimore who surpassed a lot of – who lapped a lot of people in expiration dates probably three or four times. You know, is it the end for, for Harbaugh? I don't think it is. But um, they're going to have to make some changes in the offseason, in my opinion. Change number one will be getting rid of Greg Roman. You bring him back, you're asking for trouble. Mm. Because I just don't think I just I think the guy in terms of putting together a offensive game plan. Yep. I don't think he's very good at it. I think I think offensive coordinators often they don't have game plans. They have agendas, meaning this is what I'm going to do in this game. Well, what if the defense does something else? Doesn't matter. This is what we do. That's not a plan. That's an agenda. I think Greg Roman is one of those guys that goes into every game with an agenda. Talking to Rob Long in Baltimore, the Ravens trying to uh, spoil the fun for the Steelers as they try to win the game and uh, hope that Jacksonville can pull off a stunner and beat the Colts. Friday tailgate brought to you by your local Nissan dealers. So it's not Lamar Jackson. It's Tyler Huntley again at quarterback, Rob. Are the Steelers catching a big break there? Is there this huge fall-off from Lamar Jackson to the guy that is going to be under center for the Ravens on Sunday? You know, some people in Baltimore would tell you no because Lamar Jackson is very polarizing in this town for some reason. I'll tell you there is a fall-off. A fall I think Tyler Huntley is a guy that they really made the offense really simple for. He's a one-read guy. And he okay. struggles when he has to go progress through the offensive passing game, in my opinion. Uh, you saw that before. Uh, you saw it last week. You saw it uh, when, when they played the Green Bay Packers and he went for two and he rolled out to the right looking for his tight end, uh, Mark Andrews. When Andrews wasn't open, he forced it in there. He didn't see Hollywood Brown in the back of the end zone. He didn't see a running lane in front of him that had a red carpet to the end zone. He didn't see all of those things because he locked in on the first receiver. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he does, and I think a lot of that is because you heard John Harbaugh after that game with the Packers say, well, the play was designed to go to Mark Andrews. Huh? The NFL. not designed to go to anybody. It's designed to hit the open man. But I think he is one of the offense that is hit the first read. It's designed to go here. And I think the, the Steelers, you know, being a veteran bunch, much like the, the uh, Los Angeles Rams did in the second half, They'll figure that out. Tyler Huntley had 147 yards passing in the first half. Mm. He had 50 in the second half. Why? Because they sat on that first read and they made him progress and he struggled with it. Rob, I know you said this game specifically because both teams are on life support for the playoffs, doesn't have a ton of that Steelers Ravens juice. Do you? I'm looking at a rising team now with the best quarterback in the division, I think, in Cincinnati. You're wondering if Steelers Ravens is going to have a little bit less juice for the next couple of years, potentially, because the Steelers might be down? I, I said this uh, on the show all week. Um, I thought the, the Ravens-Steelers rivalry, as we know it, dies a little bit when, when, when Ben Roethlisberger says goodbye. Because we're, who are the real villains right now? I mean, you, you don't really have them right now. you got a great player, T.J. Watt, but he's not a villain. Um, so I think that a little bit of it, as we know it, it's always going to be Raven Steelers. I mean, that's just what it is. But the, as we know it, I mean, think about some of the characters on your side. You know, the Joey Porter, the Troy Palomalo, the Hans Wards of the world. You know, How about Robert. some of the guys on your side? I know who the legend of the game is, Mr. Ball So Hard University right. himself. What do you mean legend of the game? What's that mean? What? Yeah, what does, being honored. The, what does that oh, entail for Terrell yeah. Suggs? He just, they bring him out They're bringing him the out game? for this game? Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. They bring him out. They do that. They sizzle. They do that here in Baltimore each game. I think... I think it's it's suiting. I think it fits because I don't know if you guys know this. Nobody has sacked Ben Roethlisberger more than Terrell Suggs. I've had that like stamped into my brain over the last. I know week. nobody yeah. ever hit him harder than Bart Scar uh, Bart Scott too. And then he said today that Ben is a very punchable face. Do you agree <laughs> with that, Rob? <laughs> oh, Ben Roethlisberger does have a punchable face. Come on, how do you not agree with it? <laughs> ben Roethlisberger is so easy not to like. Come on, man. I mean, yeah, I thought, on, you I love it. Him. I thought, I, I thought Flacco had a stupid face. He, he looked like oh, Bert he, from Sesame Street. 
don't. Unless, if you think I'm gonna sit here and defend Joe Flacco, you don't know me. Did you just meet me? Did you just meet me? No, I think I put one right in your wheelhouse, Rob. Hey, how, hey, how bad is this defense? One stat says they're great against the run, and then the passing stats not so much. So can Roethlisberger come in there and have a field day in his last hurrah? They are good against the run because people don't do it because he passes against them so well. Um, you know that's that that's that is kind of kind of changed it a little bit, you know. And yeah, they, do they stop the run or do people not run? <laughs> I don't okay. know. Um, uh, yeah, they give up a lot of big plays, but I got to be honest with you. Um, I think I think Charles Barkley plays this game on on TNT for pregame for basketball where they have some guy who's playing for a team and they don't know. And Charles Barkley says, "Who he played for?" <laughs> well, you can give me you can give me the starting secondary for the Ravens and not tell me they play for the Ravens. And I'll ask you, well, who do we play for? I don't know. <laughs> Marlon Humphrey's out. Marcus Peters out. It goes on and on and on. Oh, yeah. Tavon Young. I'll go with that one. But these guys, I don't, we don't know who these guys are. Chris Westry didn't even play mm. uh, uh, last week. And, and three weeks ago, I didn't know who the hell he was. Wow. So, I mean, and so it's just like that. I don't know whether or not. I, I think it's probably the pieces that's playing. Because I don't believe, especially in the NFL, next man up. I don't believe in next man up. Because, you, I mean, if that's the next man up, okay, well, start Mason Rudolph on Sunday and tell me you got just as good of an no, opportunity. No, we don't want anything. You don't, you don't know us that well because we think he sucks out loud. Hey, Rob. Yeah, exactly. That's my point. Yep. Next man up. The hey, next man up doesn't fly. Hey, before we let you run and get back to the French fries. Um, what's the scene going to be like there on Sunday? Is it going to be rabid because people want to give Ben the middle finger one last time before he's done, think, or do you think people are just kind of mailing it in? I think it's going to be weird. I think when he comes out, you're going to look at him and say, son of a gun, you man, you're great. Yay. But then when the ball goes up in the air, that's when the middle finger comes up. I do. I think that's going to be the sentiment. I think, I think Baltimore Ravens, Football fans are intelligent football fans. They know who number seven is. They know what he represents. So pay that man his due respect for about 10 seconds. Then after that, that's when you put your middle finger up and hope that your team sends him off with a loss. Book in his career. He started his career here in Baltimore, finishing in Baltimore with a loss. Hey, Rob, if we're going to get fries in Baltimore, where's the spot to get them? You, you got one you oh, like? Man. I love fries in a lot of different places. I love Jimmy's famous seafood. They got good fries. I heard that place. Vinegar on them. And you can also get great crab cakes there as well. So I like that also. Mr. Bill's Terrace said tremendous place as well if you're talking fries. And, of course, one of my one of my favorite places, Top Hat, where you can go get some good fries, some good food, and play some pool as well. It's, like, it's not your typical pool hall. And the side, when you first go in, there's a lot of pool tables, but they got some of the best food. In all of East Baltimore County, you gotta love it there. So, several places to get food. Rob Long, Ravens expert, fries expert, and likes Big Ben. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, Rob. You all have a good one.